Okay, so that concludes the um, kind of review of the wells. Now let's look at an example. So this example is a small example uh, like your project. I mean, it's nine grid blocks. In fact, it's, I guess, probably a little harder because you have a constant pressure condition on this side over here. Where, so no flow on the other two, constant pressure, constant bottom hole injector, constant bottom hole pressure injector in I-9, constant rate uh, producer in, I in L5. Well, I said I, I meant L. Okay. So the I grid blocks, using our standard convention, so the I grid blocks are this direction, J grid blocks are that direction, and L numbers sequentially. So in grid block one, you have two no-flow boundary conditions. Okay, so we're going to write, actually write the mass balance equation for that grid block. In this case, uh, in this case, you have the half transmissibilities in both directions, right? So you have the the half transmissibility between 1 and 2, uh, between i equals 1 and 2, so that would be at i equals uh, uh, 3 halves, and then you also have the transmissibility between j equals 1 and 2. And so this is the trans, uh, it may be hard for you guys to see, uh, this is the, oh, okay. That's the transmissibility, I equals 3 half, J equals 1, uh, and this is the transmissibility at um, I equals 1, J equals 3 half. So that's these two guys, right? These two go away because you're, there's no flow outside of that. And so then finally, uh, the equation becomes this. And if you stick that into the first row of the transmissibility matrix, this is what you get. Now we'll look at I equals 2. No flow on the bottom. You have to compute the transmissibilities across here, here, and there. Okay. There's the total mass balance. This transmissibility term is zero. Um, this guy is zero because there's no flow here. And so eventually you get this equation. And you plug that into the transmissibility matrix and you get that. This one's a little different. Now you have no flow on the bottom, and you have constant <coughs> pressure on the right-hand side. So we have to count for the constant pressure condition on the right-hand side. We do that in the exact same way we did in 1D. We just have additional indices to keep track of, but it, it, we're only dealing with the constant pressure on that side. Uh, no flow on the bottom causes this term to go to zero and you get this equation. Right? And so there you you get this term on the diagonal and then later we'll see, remember, because there's a constant pressure, you'll have a 2T TB on the right hand side in the Q vector. Um, this is more of the same, it's you know it's essentially the same as um, this grid block, you just have to keep track of separate, uh, separate indices. So you get that. Center one's really easy, right? You're just computing the transmissibilities along all the boundaries. Uh, that one does have a well, so we have to account for that. It's a constant rate well, so you just have the Q5 over here. Right? 
It's a constant rate well. Um, this one, now you have a, uh, well, it's not a well in that one, but you have to deal with the pressure condition, pressure boundary condition again. So you get this entry. That one's pretty easy. That one's even easier. And then finally, in this one, now you have a constant bottom hole pressure well. Um, yeah. So this is pretty complicated because you have no flow on the top, constant pressure boundary condition on the right, and constant bottom hole pressure well there. So you have to compute the productivity index. And this is your Q. And of course, then you're going to end up with a J term added to the matrix to the right, to the left hand side. Right. There's a J there now. Okay. And we're not going to stick that J into our T matrix, right? but it's going to be its own diagonal matrix. All right, so it's not there, but it'll be in its own J matrix. It'll be the only term in that matrix. So there's your total T matrix. Um, if all the permeabilities were uniform, then it just becomes that. You paint a diagonal matrix. I mean, the other one was pentadiagonal too. It was harder to see because you had all the terms. But now it's just your standard pentadiagonal matrix. Your accumulation matrix, straightforward. Your J matrix, you just have the one entry there. Your source vector is a little more complicated, so you have the two TBs all come from the constant pressure but boundary condition on the right. The Q5 comes from the constant rate injector in the fifth in the center grid block. And this term comes from the constant bottom hole pressure well in the ninth grid block, the upper right hand corner grid block. By the way, this example will be posted to Canvas uh, a little bit later. So um, if you plug in these properties and assume a uni uniform transmissibility, you get these equations. Uh, block 9, that's the <coughs> equivalent radius. That's the productivity index. You plug all the numbers in. And then you put it all together and solve it. There is the solution after one time step, implicit, one implicit time step. And here's the steady state solution. So what you have here is a verification problem for your code, for your project, right? You know what the answer should be for this problem. So if you write your code generic enough that you can set it up and put all the inputs in, and, and you don't have to. Right? You can take your chances that you wrote it right your way. right? Because your code is a little bit easier, because you don't have a constant pressure boundary condition. right? So if you didn't want to add that and you, and you want to come up with some other way to verify it, it's fine. But if you wanted to, you could verify against this problem. Then you know your code is correct. And you can go on to solve the, solve the uh, pro project two. OK? Any questions?